Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Well, today we're diving deep into a topic that's shaking up the royal world. While King Charles has been trying to reshape his image as a humanitarian who wants to end homelessness, and Prince William has been actively pushing an environmental agenda. We know about Prince William's homebound and this ridiculous thing about trying to end homelessness. Recent revelations paint a different picture, very different picture. Investigations have uncovered disturbing details about their roles as slum lords, you know, landlords, you know, slum landlords. It turns out that Charles and William, through their control over the Dutch estates, are renting out properties in appalling conditions. So that's why they call it like slums, like... It's time to look beyond the polished PR and expose what's really happening in their rental empire. Properties plagued with mold, poor insulation, and inadequate heating that leave tenants struggling to stay warm. Yet still they want to end homelessness and even the ones they have is not being taken care of properly so that people can live in a peaceful and... um healthy environment? Oh my God. The Royal Homelessness and Environmental Agendas. Let's start with William. He's recently ramped up um, efforts to tackle homelessness, a cause he's personally championed for years. William has publicly stated that homelessness is one of the blights of our times and he's called for solutions that promote affordable housing for all. Similarly, Charles and Williams has made homelessness a focal point, promoting his support through various public appearances, interviews, and even a recent documentary. William has a platform for homelessness and environmental causes too, often discussing sustainability and the need for an eco-friendly future. On paper, this sounds promising. Two powerful royals using their influence to advocate for positive change. But what's often missed in the headlines is how much their wealth comes from property. In fact, the Duchy of Lancaster and the Duchy of Cornwall estates bring in millions on annually. These estates are not just ornamental royal lands. They're also part of a lucrative real estate empire. But behind the grandeur lies a harsh reality for the tenants who live there. A deeper look at the Duchy of Cornwall's rental empire. Now, let's focus on William's um, Duchy of Cornwall estate, right? which he inherited upon becoming Prince of Wales. The Duchy of Cornwall spans 130 acres of land and includes a massive rental portfolio. It's a sprawling empire that's worth billions and generates around 30 million a year in revenue. The estate includes properties that house not only private renters, but also charities, military members, and public service organizations. On the surface, this might seem like a great or ideal setup, with the estate supporting a wide variety of tenants. However, recent investigations reveal that many of these properties don't even meet the bare minimum of energy efficiency standards. According to the Daily Mirror and Channel 4 dispatches, nearly one in seven of the Dutch's residential rental properties have the lowest energy performance certificate ratings, F or G. This means that they are poorly insulated, damp, and difficult to heat, causing major problems for tenants who are already struggling with rising costs. For years, it has been illegal for landlords to rent properties with these ratings without a valid exemption. Yet, the Duchy has applied for these exemptions, claiming that improving the properties would be too costly. These people are just unconscionable, ridiculous. 
the tenant experience, right? Stories from living, from people living in royal properties. So what does it really mean to live in one of these royal rental properties? Unfortunately, the stories from tenants are heartbreaking. Tenants have come forward to describe freezing homes, damp walls, and escalating costs for heating. For example, one tenant without central heating spends hundreds of pounds a month on coal and wood just to keep two rooms warm. In his words, it gets miserably cold, especially in winter. I can only heat two rooms in my home using a wood burner and a coal fire. OMG, this is sad. When I ask about installing radiators, I was told my rent would be increased considerably if they did. Another tenant, an elderly gentleman, relies on a single fireplace for heat and was wrapped in blanket um, when reporters visited him in early September. These aren't isolated cases. Another tenant reported that their house was declared inhabit uninhabitable due to the lack of insulation and heating, with even the curtains swinging when the wind blew through the, through the house. When they inquired about improvements um, like double glazing, they were told it wasn't allowed because King Charles doesn't like it. These conditions create more than just discomfort. They pose health risk. Prolonged exposure to cold, damp environments is known to cause respiratory issues, um, aggravate arthritis, and increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, particularly in older people. The environmental hypocrisy. Williams's double standards. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Prince William's environmental um, advocacy and his homelessness um, initiative, right? For years, William has positioned himself as a voice for the environment. Because you know he has earth shot, right? Speaking out about climate change, sustainability, and the importance of eco-friendly practices. Yet, as the investigations reveal, his own rental properties are failing to meet basic eco-friendly standards. These poorly insulated homes demand far more energy to heat, significantly impacting both the tenant's wallet and the environment. Environmental experts have pointed out the irony here. William, who constantly urges the public to reduce their carbon footprint, is profiting off properties that are energy inefficient and contribute to higher carbon emissions. Making improvements to these properties like adding insulation, double glazing windows, and installing central heating would not only help the environment, but would also align with Williams's public stance on sustainability. But rather than putting his money where his mouth is, William has chosen to take exemptions that excuse him from making these vital upgrades. You see, they, they know how to manipulate the law just to suit them. You know, it's the same with tax. That's what the queen did. She went and she manipulated the situation so they don't have to pay um, taxes, whereas the people have to. The king's role, how much did he really change? It's also worth noting that King Charles was the Duke of Cornwall before William before William became, you know, Duke of, um, what was it, um, Prince of Wales and whatever, meaning he controlled these properties for decades before his ascension to the throne. During this time, he had ample opportunity to make these changes, but did not. Despite his outspoken um, support for environmental and social causes, Charles seemingly overlooked at or ignored the grim grim realities of the properties in his care. This contradiction raises questions about how seriously Williams and Charles actually take the issue they publicly support. Williams's homelessness campaign look hollow when, as a landlord, he has failed to ensure that his own properties provide adequate shelter and warmth. These properties, after all, 
aren't just a business venture, they are people's homes. Fuel Poverty Action and the Fight for Tenants' Right. The organization Fuel Property Action has criticized the royal estates, calling them rogue landlords, for maintaining properties in such poor conditions. They highlighted how F and G rated homes are not just inefficient, but actively harmful to tenants' health. These ratings mean higher energy bills, often triple the cost for tenants trying to stay warm. Fuel Poverty Action points out that low-income tenants living in royal properties are essentially trapped, afraid to speak out about conditions for fear for, of rent hikes or eviction. One of the most disturbing part of this story is how tenants feel silence. They reported that complaining about the conditions um, risk rent increases, leaving them to suffer in silence. While UK law theoretically protects tenants, the reality is that they are, the, they are at the mercy of landlords with enormous power, including the royals. The power imbalance in the royal housing system. What's especially troubling is the power dynamics at play here. The royals are operate within a system that protects their interests and their immense wealth and influence make it almost impossible for tenants to hold them accountable. While ordinary landlords are regularly scrutinized, the Duchy of Cornwall and the Duchy of Lancaster have managed to avoid the same level of accountability. The fact that they have received millions from these properties while skirting basic legal responsibilities demonstrates the systemic inequalities in the UK housing market, the need for accountability and the cracks in the royal image. In conclusion, these revelations raise serious questions about the true nature of the royals' social and environmental commitments. For years, King Charles and Prince William have presented themselves as champions of the people, but their actions as landlords tell a different story. The investigation reveals a pattern of neglect and hypocrisy that can no longer be ignored. So, what do you think about this? Should the royals face accountability for these substandard conditions? Are their public commitment just a facade designed to maintain their image? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth analysis in royal news um, and the story behind the headlines. Thank you for watching.